हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अनुराधा शर्मा एंड यू आर वाचिंग माय चैनल आइज विद अनुराधा लिसनिंग सेक्शन 1 यू विल हियर अ कन्वर्सेशन बिटवीन अ ट्रैवल एजेंट एंड अ कस्टमर फर्स्ट यू हैव सम टाइम टू लुक एट क्वेश्चंस 1 टू 7 You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get some information about trips to New Zealand. Uh, certainly. Take a seat and I'll be right with you. Thanks. Now, where would you like to go in New Zealand? Well, I was hoping to do a bit of travelling around actually. There are a few things I'd like to see and do before I go back home. Right. One thing I really want to do is go to Christchurch. I have relatives living there that I can stay with, my mother's cousin, and I've heard it's a nice place. The woman says she has relatives living there. So the first activity, visit family, has been circled now we shall begin you should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 7 good morning can i help you yes i'd like to get some information about trips to new zealand Uh, certainly. Take a seat and I'll be right with you. Thanks. Now, where would you like to go in New Zealand? Well, I was hoping to do a bit of travelling around actually. There are a few things I'd like to see and do before I go back home. Right. One thing I really want to do is go to Christchurch. I have relatives living there that I can stay with, my mother's cousin, and I've heard it's a nice place. Yes, it's a lovely city. And staying with relatives will help with the budget, of course. The budget? It will save you some money. Oh, right. Well, I'm not too worried about that. I've saved quite a bit of money working in Australia. Oh, that's nice. Good for you. Uh, well, you know that New Zealand consists of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, and Christchurch is on the South Island. Is it? I was never very good at geography at school. <laughs> Do you have a map I could look at? Uh sure. Uh, here we are. Right, I see. And well, then I'd also like to spend some time in Auckland and maybe I could do an English language course there. Can you organize that sort of thing for me? Oh, certainly. We'd be happy to arrange that. Uh but bear in mind that Auckland is in the North Island. Okay. and i'd also like to do some skiing or maybe even some snowboarding i hear new zealand is a great place for that yes absolutely but uh, you should go to auckland first for your studies and then you can get the ferry across to the south island and take the bus down to the snow oh i don't like boats very much <laughs> i'm not much of a sailor I think I prefer to fly. <laughs> right. Um what about joining a walking tour? That could be really fun. Not sure about walking, but joining a tour might be a good way to travel because then I might make some friends my own age. Now, let's get some details. Uh can I have your name please? Yes, it's Su Ming Li, but you can call me Su. <laughs> Okay, Sue. And what's your address here in Melbourne? I'm living with my aunt in the suburb of Kew. It's 29 Lock Street. That's L O C H, not L O C K. Do you have a phone number that I can get you on? The best thing would be if I give you my mobile. I always have it on me. It's 0402 558 
Okay. And、uh, when do you want to travel? Because you'll need to be down south in July or August. Oh yes, of course. That's winter, isn't it? So I better go to Auckland in May. Yes. Let's say、um, departing from Melbourne on the first of May. That's a Saturday,、mm. and then you could begin your course on Monday the third. That sounds great. And how long would you like to study for?、Um, a month, two, three. What do you think? Well, I'll probably need more than a month.、Uh, what about eight weeks until the end of June? Fine, I'll see what I can do. Oh, and、uh, how would you like to pay for this? On my visa card, if that's possible. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions eight to ten. Now listen and answer questions eight to ten. Hello, Sue. It's Angelo from Cosmos Travel here. I've booked your flight, and I've found you an English college called the Harbour Language Centre. Great. Where exactly is that?、Uh, well, have you got that little map I gave you yesterday? Ah,、uh, yes. You see where the harbour is with the three wharves and the water. Yes, got that. Okay, there are two parallel streets, Key Street, that's Q U A Y, and Custom Street. The building where the college is located is on Key Street, opposite Prince's Wharf. Right, got it. And what about accommodation? Well, I've booked you into a hotel for the first three nights. And then the accommodation officer will find you a family to live with. Good. And where's the hotel? It's a short walk from the college, on the corner of Queen Street and City Road. Which corner exactly? On the left-hand side, as we're looking at the map. Okay, near the little park. Yes, that's right. And what about a good bookshop? I'm going to need to buy a dictionary and some English books. Yes, well, I believe there's a really good language bookshop on the corner of Customs Street and Queen Street. It's near the college, so that's pretty convenient. Thank you so much. You've been really helpful. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear part of a local radio program, in which the head of the Park Arts Center is interviewed about events that are going to be held at the center. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to twenty. Now listen to the conversation, and answer questions eleven to twenty. 
And next on City Life this week, we have with us in the studio Harvey Bowles, head of the Park Arts Centre. He's here to tell us about forthcoming events at the centre. Harvey, welcome. Hello, thank you. So, what can we look forward to first at the Park Centre? We've got a very exciting programme lined up for you. The next event will start on the 18th of February and run till the 24th. Times for the event: twice each day at 2:30 and 7:30 p.m. There'll be a folk music concert, and、uh, we're sure this is going to be very popular. A range of excellent musicians are coming,、uh, some playing for the first time in this country. And for those who want a souvenir, or for people who don't manage to get to the performances. The foyer shop will be selling a CD showcasing the great talents of the performers. Sounds good. <laughs> yes, and then after that, our next event is starting on the first of March and runs for eight days. There's a lot going on, so you'll need to look in the separate program, which shows all the various times and so on. It also includes details of performers and ticket prices. You can pick one up from the foyer at the centre. Yes, this year we're hosting the dance festival again, and it's going to be even bigger than last year. It's become a major feature of the arts year, and many of the performances will be recorded on video and DVD. But、uh, nothing can beat the thrill of attending the events live. We have a great range of styles performed by over a hundred groups, representing as many as four continents. All I can say is book early because many of the shows are going to sell out quickly. I'm sure they will. And what do you have for us after that? Well,、uh, then things get a little quieter, but no less interesting. From the 14th to the 20th of March, every evening at eight, we go into cinema mode, and we're showing a fine new film. I expect you've seen reviews of it. Love and Hope. Oh yes, wonderful. Yes, and it's not just an ordinary screening. We're delighted that each screening will be introduced by a short lecture by the producer, who will also leave a little time for questions from the audience. Again, I recommend early booking for this. It's bound to be popular. I'll be there. <laughs> Anything else lined up at this point? Yes, we've got a special one-day event on April the second. Uh, the times aren't fixed yet, but I can tell you that we're having a singing competition. Oh yes! <laughs> There'll be a large number of entrants, and the talent should be impressive. And Channel Six are coming, so the event is going to be shown on TV. So come and be part of the audience. I'm sure people will want to. Well, Harvey, thank you very much for coming in and telling us all this. Details of all the events are on your website, aren't they? Yes, yes. The address is www. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section three. You will hear a student, Alex, asking his tutor for advice about essay writing. You now have thirty seconds to read questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Hi, Alex. Come in. I gather you wanted some help with writing essays. Yes, I'm finding this first term difficult, and I'm worried about the assignments we have to do for January. Well, let me see if I can help. 
You shouldn't panic about it because essay writing is a very straightforward process, really. What it involves is organizing the information that you want to include. You shouldn't have more than you can easily manage within the word count. Make sure you haven't got too much or anything irrelevant.、Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to look at that and work out what you need and what you don't need before you start, and then you just have to think about how you're going to put forward your argument. Oh, that sounds very straightforward when you put it like that. <laughs> But I'm worried I haven't got the necessary skills for writing an effective essay because English is my second language.、Mm. Well, perhaps you misunderstand the skills you need. You need to be able to analyze your data, and then I would say the skills of interpretation and expressing yourself are important. Perhaps it's this last one that bothers you. But the more essays you write, the more you will develop these skills. Yes, and I don't quite know how to improve at that. Though, as you say, I know practice will help,、mm. and I need to make sure I've got everything ready before I start. Yes, what is vital to good essay writing is preparation. So make sure you build in enough time to do the research you need. Are there any other sources I can use to help me with essays? Yes, you should go to the library and look through the reference section. Because there are books that focus on the style we use in academic writing, and those will help you a lot. The other thing that you should think about is what happens when you've actually written your essay. Too many students just complete their work and hand it in, whereas what you should be doing is making sure that you edit it as thoroughly as possible. Oh yes, that's a good idea. Then I'd pick up any mistakes and also see if it reads logically. Exactly.、Uh, the other thing is, again, what a lot of students do is get their essays back, look at the marks, then just file it away.、Hmm. <laughs> they don't realize that if they checked it through and looked at what the tutor had written, then they can learn from their old essays. Yeah, I can see that's a good idea. So, is that okay? You can always come back to me. You now have fifteen seconds to read questions twenty-eight to thirty. Actually,、uh, there were a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about essay writing. Uh huh. I had had a few thoughts of my own about what I should do, such as really taking good notes when I'm reading, because that helps, doesn't it?、Mm, I think it improves your knowledge rather than your actual writing.、Uh, but one tip I can give you is to try and not read too much. Otherwise, you end up including irrelevant material in your essay. Remember to stay on task. Yes, sometimes I have problems interpreting the questions correctly, or the whole question seems overwhelming to me.、Mm. What I try to do is highlight the key parts and divide it into smaller chunks so I can manage it. Well, you might find it useful to break it down even further by making sure you understand all the words perfectly before you start. Things like assess or comment and such like. Yes, I see. Sometimes, after an objective analysis, the question actually asks you for a subjective opinion, but you must remember to support your arguments if that's the case.、Mm. Um, one final comment I can make is about using your own words. You must try to do this as far as possible. You're expected to summarize what you've read, not just string together a list of quotations. 
In fact, you shouldn't have too many. Just use them where it's really important. Okay, thanks. Do you read other students' essays when you've finished? No. Why? Is that a good idea? Well, you can confuse each other, so I'd advise against it. But it's up to you. Okay. Thanks very much for your time. And... That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4 You will hear the beginning of a lecture about turkey farming. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. Ever since it was first served and eaten at the wedding feast of Charles XI of France and Elizabeth of Austria way back in 1570, the consumption of turkey meat has continued to grow. In recent years, the popularity and subsequent interest in turkey farming has also grown substantially, and along with this interest, there have been a number of significant changes which have occurred in turkey production, which I'd like to point out to you all. In some of the larger companies in the UK, understanding of genetics has been used to good effect with selected stock showing an increase in growth rate and a higher proportion of lean white breast meat. Turkey breeding companies operating from the UK have achieved an important position in the European market, as well as having a part of the market share in the USA. Knowledge of the nutrient requirements of turkeys has also advanced and diets to exploit the genetic potential for rapid growth have been formulated with great precision. Canada and North America have led the way in this area. Different feeding strategies are employed within the industry to control the nutrient intake of breeder flocks. These management techniques usually involve limiting the availability of feed, especially to the older males. The intention is to slow down growth rate, thus reducing the likelihood of leg disorders and to maximise breeder production. Throughout the world, the most serious infectious diseases that have impacted upon turkey health are now almost entirely controlled due to improvements in site hygiene and the introduction of live and killed vaccines. In addition, the geographical isolation of turkey growing farms remains an important means of limiting the spread of disease. Now, throughout the USA and Britain, controlled environment housing now operates with greater precision since the ventilation requirements of the stock are better understood. Approximately 90% of the birds in the UK, for example, are produced in large flocks on commercial sites which require precise control of temperature. Feeding and drinking systems have been increasingly mechanised in order to improve efficiency and to ensure that the birds receive adequate fresh feed and water. Equipment such as artificial lighting is also used to overcome the long winters in some of the more extreme areas of the world. While quite popular early on, a vast majority of turkeys are no longer beak trimmed. However, in most cases where birds are kept in natural daylight, the beaks are usually trimmed when the birds are only a few days old. Now, the turkey industry can be divided into three main categories. 
primary breeders, breeders and producers. The primary breeders maintain and develop the quality of the genetic stock within the population by selection of the most suitable individuals. Primary breeders sell parent stock to breeders either as hatching eggs or as turkey chicks, which, by the way, are commonly referred to as poults. General characteristics that are important to the health and welfare of the birds are taken into account in breeding. Things such as the ability of the birds to walk without difficulty, reproductive ability, growth and conformation are all key considerations for breeders. Breeders multiply their growing stock by mating parents bought from the primary breeder. A breeder rears the male and female parents from hatching eggs or poults, selecting the best of them to go on to produce fertile eggs from which the growing stock will be hatched. Breeders sell commercial growing stock. Turkey producers can be divided into two groups, relatively large companies whose farms produce turkeys all year round, and relatively small companies and farmers whose farms produce turkeys primarily for the seasonal market. The non-seasonal producers account for approximately 90% of the output of the UK industry and are dominated by three major companies. The seasonal producers account for the remaining approximately 10%, the busiest time of year for producers, large and small, is clearly the October to December quarter. That is the end of section 4. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.